Okay, today I want to show you an alternative option for a Mopar alternator. Now, Mopar did keep uh, pretty much the same alternator design through, looks like 61 to 87 for the most part. There's, there's some variables, do your research on what you have. Most of them were 35 amp alternators, which if you're starting to run uh, modern cooling fans or, you know, like, turbocharged duster I mean I've got electric cooling fans I've got intercooler pumps intercooler fans the whole EFI system it's an air-conditioned car huge electrical loads on it so stock alternator will not cut it there's some bolt-on options that look pretty much the same and looks like at least two different manufacturers those are generally like 190 to 250 dollars but you can get a hundred to 135 amp one that looks pretty much like this stock um, alternator and you know some people want things to look 100% original now obviously if I'm fuel injecting turbo all that stuff I don't care about being 100% original but it did need some higher current so I took an option of running one of the newer it's a nip and denso alternator that you can wire up to your old Mopar's regulator. Now, since I've got an old engine sitting here, I thought I'd kind of show you how this is set up. Now, this would be kind of stock setup, stock belt. Um, in fact, this car here had very few options, so that's why it looks so plain, make it a great demo. Now, if you're gonna run the Nip and Denso, um, Maybe that'll focus on our tag here, uh, which has got part number and all that. This is 120 amp, so I got one of the higher ones. And essentially this was early 90s uh, Dodge Dakota. And I got the higher amperage. In fact, this tag is actually saying it tested at 6,000 RPM at 157. 2,098 amps, so considerably better than this. Uh, I've had very little problems with running this. The biggest problem is this distance here is a little tighter than the stock alternator. So I'll show you how to do that. And if you're ordering those, also watch some of the early 90s cars had serpentine belts and some had V-belts. So I just ordered one with the V-belt to make it easier. But when you're doing this you're going to have to modify a bracket for that smaller width and when doing that you need to make sure your belt still line up so using a little camera to kind of show v-belt lining up that way you don't chew up your belts throw them off that type of thing so let's real quick remove this drop things on the floor all that good stuff So what I have on the car is a stock bracket. Unmodified, in fact, the bracket's off the 75 dark donor car I have at the moment. In fact, the whole engine's out of the 75. But, let's do that and clearly will not bolt up gently or easily. So let's swap out our bracket. And the nice part is, I mean, I could sit here and show you the whole grinding it down, trying to line it up, but I've got one done. So simply take this bit of nastiness off. Now, and if you're not worried about stock looks, there's some even smaller alternators you can get a hold of that uh, you know power works i think is one um, a few other brands but there's options out there this option i i liked because i can run into any parts store and get a replacement alternator so it doesn't matter what state i'm in that's state of the union not uh, state of mind 
All right, let's see if this will hold well enough. Of course, notice I have no coil because I don't run coils. Well, I run coils. I don't have a single coil. I have coil pack. Different video. Okay. Now, there you go. Know, this actually lines up. Probably going to do some adjustment work on it while I have things apart. As you can see, I'm a little too tight still. You should have to where this little slip unit in the back should actually still be coming forward a little bit. So that's something I'm going to work on. here we know our belts already still lined up so this one sits a little farther out um, which I like a little farther away from the engine block itself still clears the side pretty well I'm at a limit of kind of a stock belt uh, in the slider but that's up to you it's easy to get the next size smaller V belt I mean if there's still numbers left it's pretty much walk in the store telling me you need an X size smaller and they should be able to accommodate that. So, like I said, make sure as you grind this bracket down to make it fit that you're watching your uh, V-belt alignment. Then the only other thing you have to do is change out your terminals on the back. So, a stock Stock alternator has uh, quarter inch slide type connectors. Uh, one thing to make sure of to make this as easy as just bolting it on, you need new enough alternator system, the electronic, that both of these terminals say field. If one says ground, you need to change a regulator also to make this conversion work. And in the case of this Snip and Denso U, which you can see the ND here, you just simply change the end wires you got two field wires on this that you now use a ring terminal and you're up and running. And I've been running this alternator a couple of years now, working it hard, but it uh, seems to be a great, great mod for one of these. And I also like the fact that with its middle case like this, kind of open, it looks similar enough to a stock alternator. I've actually had no one really question about it where it came from or what it is. So anyway, I hope this helps you on your projects and remember to do your research. Don't just throw things in and hopefully there's something in here to help you out. One additional note is I have this spacer in here to clear the body of the alternator when adjusting it this far out. So you may need to do that or slightly different brackets, but it's up to you. Okay, so I was just modifying my bracket. So I've used a little machinist blue. That's kind of wears off at high points, but just wanted to show you I made this uh, fit much more appropriate. And our uh, little stress relief slider here should work just fine now. Okay, I noticed uh, this old alternator off to 75 shows the same problem of why I originally looked for a different alternator. For the duster a couple years ago. So this is the Nip and Denso. Nice, quiet. This is what most Mopar ones sounds like. Maybe we'll even try to get a little closer here. So yeah, that's why I replaced it in the first place is bearings were making noise like most of the Mopar ones do, so that's where upgrading was a huge benefit.
This has got a lot of miles on it. It's still spinning nice and smooth. And thanks for watching.